The history of the United States Air Force Chaplain Service is a story of a people of faith who have answered the call, not only to serve their God, but also to serve their country. It is a story of courage, inspired by a faith that has soared on wings like eagles. It is a story of hearts bound together with a singular passion, the caring for souls. This is the story of the United States Air Force Chaplain Service. Lord, guard and guide the ones who fly. Our Air Force hymn, it echoes across our nation and throughout the world wherever America's airmen serve our country. In times of peace, its words focus our faith and strengthen community. In times of war, its verses inspire uncommon courage, the courage of heroes who launched their craft into unknown perils aloft. From the Wright brothers until today, faith and flight have been the hallmark of aviation. And Father, we pray that your will will be perfected in the earth as it is in heaven. I will say this is the day Since its inception, the chaplain service has carried forth the message from the flight lines to the front lines as the men and women of our Air Force Chaplain Service serve as visible reminders of the holy. This is the story of courage, faith, and caring for souls. The history of the United States Air Force Chaplain Service. And the priest shall come forward and speak to the people and say, As you draw near this day to battle, do not fear. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you the victory. Deuteronomy chapter 20. From the earliest recorded writings of our faith, men and women have answered the call of God to march and to minister alongside their soldiers. The chaplain's role has been shaped by church history. In 1175, the Synod of Westminster determined that chaplains should be prohibited from taking up arms. The duty of a chaplain is the care of souls, and it is well if he meddle in no other business, but make the care of souls his only care. Reformation Commentary, 16th century. From the birth of our nation, chaplains served along with the soldiers of the colonial militias and the Continental Army. Early in the Revolution, General Washington ordered his commanders to provide for the spiritual welfare of the men. Every regiment shall be staffed with chaplains. They must be persons of good character and exemplary lives. George Washington, 1776. The dawn of the 1860s brought on the bloodiest war in American history. These chaplains from the 9th Virginia Corps were among the almost 4,000 full and part-time chaplains who served the Union or Confederate armies. Trying to sustain morale and faith of soldiers caught in a chaotic military existence was an overwhelming task as death waited for thousands. Dear sir and madam, it is my painful duty to announce to you the death of your son, Thomas Maddox, a sergeant of 2nd Kentucky Regiment. He was killed in the Battle of Hartsville, December 7th. He was as brave as the bravest. As sure as the Bible is true and religion the divine reality, his spirit rest. 
death shall restore him immortal. May the God of all grace comfort your hearts as only he can. Yours respectively, G.B. Overton, sometime chaplain, 2nd Kentucky, 1862. Some 41 Union and Confederate chaplains lost their lives ministering to America's soldiers. After the turn of the century, the Air Force Chaplain Service had its earliest beginnings with the assignment of a few chaplains to the new Army Air Corps units. When America entered World War I, priority was given to providing chaplains for frontline infantry troops. Even though it was the first time for American air power in battle, only a few chaplains were assigned to the Air Corps flying units in England and France. At the outbreak of World War II, with the rapid growth of air power, Army Chief of Chaplains William Arnold saw the need for increased ministry to the flying squadrons. He appointed chaplain Captain Charles I. Carpenter to be air chaplain. No squadron was to go into combat without a chaplain. The early bomber runs of World War II brought huge casualties. Bombing over Germany in World War II was about as hard a thing as you can ask an aviator to do. History records how air crews facing the horrors of anti-aircraft fire and enemy fighters drew courage and strength from the ministry of their squadron chaplains. Watching your wingman go down in smoke and flames made death seem suddenly very close. Many cried at night. On the morning of a mission, we had the chance to go into one of three rooms to meet our chaplains. We wanted a warm arm around us, telling us that God was there. We reached to the chaplain earnestly, for he was a sure and certain liaison with God. David Nash, B-24 pilot, 8th Air Force, age 21. The ministry of the Air Force Chaplain Service was forged in those perilous early days as chaplains devoted themselves to caring for the souls of the pilots and crews of the Army Air Corps. Following World War II, as the need to make the Air Corps a separate service became evident, President Harry S. Truman signed the National Security Act July 26, 1947. It established the United States Air Force as a separate service. And in September, General Carl Spots became its first Chief of Staff. At the outset, the Air Force continued to be served by Army chaplains. But Chaplain Carpenter became convinced the Air Force needed its own Chaplain Corps. The idea was initially opposed on the ground that it would set a precedent for the separation of the other services such as medical and legal. But at the urging of Chaplain Carpenter and the Air Force Generals Arnold and Doolittle, General Spots changed his mind, led by the conviction that ministry effectiveness depended upon airmen identifying with their chaplains. On June 11, 1948, Chaplain Carpenter was appointed the first Chief of the Air Force Chaplains. An Army Air Force Chaplains Board was organized to facilitate the transfer of chaplains effective July 26, 1949, the official birth date of the Air Force Chaplain Service. It began with 458 chaplains transferring into active duty and 573 into reserve status. They included Chaplain Terrence P. Finnegan, cited for valor at Wheeler Field on December 7, 1941, when the first bombs fell in the attack on Pearl Harbor. Chaplain Finnegan survived strafing and a torrent of bombs to gather the children on the base into shelters and care for and minister to the wounded men. Also among the first to transfer to the new service was Chaplain Robert Preston Taylor, who served on the front lines in the battle for the Bataan Peninsula. Chaplain Robert Preston Taylor searched out and cared for the physically wounded and disheartened, 
sometimes behind enemy lines. He brought hope and religious faith to those who had lost both and created a new faith among some who had none. Citation for Valor, 1945. Chaplain Taylor survived the Bataan Death March and 42 months of imprisonment. Later, both Taylor and Finnegan went on to serve as chiefs of chaplains. Only a year after the Air Force became a separate service, its chaplain corps was put to the test in Korea, as our nation was once again called to war. Chaplains and chaplain assistants cared for the souls of American troops and often found themselves drawn by compassion to care for the local populace as well. In August of 1950, Air Force Chaplain Russell Blaisdell and his assistant Michael Strang roamed the streets of Seoul rescuing abandoned children in the bombed out capital. As the communists later overran the city, Chaplain Blaisdell is credited with saving over a thousand children as he managed to get an entire orphanage evacuated to safety. America enjoyed only a brief interlude of peace before our forces found themselves involved in the growing conflict in Southeast Asia. In Vietnam, as in other wars, Air Force chaplains not only provided a ministry of presence to the troops, but also ministered in ways that deeply impacted the lives of the families left behind. Dear Chaplain Jouer, thank you so much for your letter. It meant more than I can say. I'm glad that you had the opportunity to know my husband. He was indeed a fine and religious man. My pilot angel now rests in the hand of God. Please remember my loved one in your prayers. Letter to Chaplain Joseph A. Jouer, Bintui Air Base, South Vietnam. Through times of peace as well as war, the chaplain service has continued to build upon its legacy. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Chaplains provide spiritual care and the opportunity for Air Force members and their families to exercise their constitutional right of freedom of religion. Those in the chaplain service conduct religious observances, provide pastoral care, model ethical leadership, and advise leadership. Hope. Chaplains and chaplain assistants have served with great effectiveness in America's Expeditionary Air Force, ministering to airmen in many ways. Like Father John Pearson, who personally blessed all the sorties of the 4th Fighter Squadron during Desert Storm, he met all the squadron's returning aircraft. When he died of a heart attack a year and a half after the war, his impact had been so great that 16 of his pilots came from four continents to pay their respects to Chaplain Father John and his ministry. Today, as new threats have arisen, demanding a greater understanding of the issues of religion and culture, the men and women of the Air Force Chaplain Service continue to support the Air Force mission promoting tolerance and understanding. Within this next year to 18 months, you will be going somewhere. Stories of special ministries abound. A young Jewish airman deployed overseas faced Passover with no one of his faith to share in the celebration. He found a Protestant chaplain and his staff willing to make the necessary preparations and share the holy meal at the airman's Passover table. It was just a moment in time, a moment where we sensed the presence of God, a holy moment that none of us will forget. Chaplain Steve Key, Operation Enduring Freedom. This story represents the heart and soul of the chaplain service, a caring, compassionate ministry that seeks to accommodate the faith of all. The legacy of the United States Air Force Chaplain Service has been written across the skies as America's airmen have drawn courage and strength from the mission of ministry 
performed by chaplains and chaplain assistants. It's a legacy of faith that has guided our course through the dark clouds of war. A legacy of hope that shines eternal, brighter than the dawn. It's a legacy that soars to the heavens in the stories of faith, hope, and love being written even today as the men and women of our United States Air Force Chaplain Service answer the call to ministry. A ministry of courage, faith, and caring for souls. Caring for Souls, the history of the United States Air Force Chaplain Service.